Section 9.1, example 13 and 14, we're going to finally do some applications. I know we all get frustrated with them, but if we can't apply math to real life, then it's really not that useful of a skill. So we have to give these a try. So we have Avery receives an inheritance of $50,000, and he decides he wants to put it into three mutual funds. He wants to put it into a money market fund. So these are stock market type things. Um, mutual funds just tend to be a mix of multiple stocks rather than a single. Um, he's going to also put it into something called a blue chip stock fund. And then the third one is a high tech stock fund. So those sound like my three variables, like how much money will he put into each? So we'll let X equal the money market fund. We'll let Y equal the blue chip. And we'll let Z equal the high tech. What else do we know? Um, Avery estimates that the money market fund returns 5%. So that'll be useful in a little bit. Um, the blue chip returns 9%. So this is how much money you would earn over a year. And then the high tech returns 16%. So Avery wants a first year return of $4,000. So we have $50,000 to invest. And then we want to get $4,000 back. So that's in addition to the $50,000. That's what returns are. So you might be wondering, why wouldn't we just put everything into the high tech since it has the highest percent? Um, it, those tend to have more risk, so it's easier to lose your money. So to avoid excessive risk, he decides to invest three times as much in the money market fund as the high tech. So we're gonna put a little bit more money in the money market just because this one's the lowest risk. Um, you're less likely to lose money. So what does that mean? Three times as much in the money market as the high tech. So the money market or X will equal three times the high tech. So three Z. All right, and we almost have a system of equations. So we know that X equals three Z. That'll be important. That's from the three times as much. And then we also know we're going to invest $50,000. So the investments are the X, Y, and Z. So we know X plus Y plus Z equals 50,000. And then returns um, should be 4,000. So how do I figure out the returns? So if we return 5%, that means it'll be 0.05 of X, the amount invested. If we return 9%, that'll be 0.09 of Y. So 0.05 X plus 0.09 Y. And so then Z would be 0.16 Z for 16%. equals 4,000. And then I'm not really a fan of the decimals, so I'm going to multiply by 100 to get rid of those ugly decimals, because then 0.05 becomes 5. So we know x plus y plus z equals 50,000, and then we know 5x plus 9y plus 16z equals four zero 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 and then two more zeros so four hundred thousand and then i could add this third equation i think it'll be easier to just replace x with three z so that we only have two variables rather than trying to do the triangular method i think it's easier to only have two variables if that's an option so i am going to replace x with three z so we get 3z plus y plus z equals 50,000. Or that tells me that we get y plus 4z is 50,000. Second one, we get 15, 5 times 3. 15z plus 9y plus 16z is 400,000. And we'll just combine the z's. So 9y plus 31z is 400,000. 
and then we'll just do elimination. So I thought this was easier to do elimination with two variables than three. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 9 to do elimination. And then we're almost done. So negative 9y plus or minus 9 times 4 is 36 minus 36z. And then we get negative 450,000. Second equation is untouched, but the y's should eliminate. We eliminated the y's. So negative 36 plus 31 gives me a negative 5z equals negative 50,000. So z is 10,000. So we'll invest 10,000 in that um, high tech fund. So let's go ahead and find the remaining ones. So Z is 10,000. So 10,000 in the high tech. We know X is three times Z. So that'll be 30,000. And then y, we'll just use one of these equations. I'll probably use y plus 4z equals 50,000. So y equals 50,000 minus 4z. So y is 50,000 minus 4,000, 40,000, or 10,000. So we'll put 10,000 in the money market, 10,000 in the, sorry, 30,000 in the money market. 10,000 in the blue chip, and 10,000 in the high tech. And we've solved it. Notice they add up to 50,000. That was our original investment. And you could calculate the interest, the percent, if you wanted to check that it adds up to 4,000. And we solved the system. So we'll do one more of these. The last one's kind of like a puzzle. Um, so you have 27 coins in example 14, quarters, dimes, and pennies. So those sound like my three variables. X is my quarters, Y is my dimes, and then Z is my pennies. And because I have 27 coins, I know that X plus Y plus Z is 27, because we have 27 total coins. And then they're worth 297. So the total amount is 297. So what else does that tell us? So that tells me that 25x for 25 cents for quarters, dimes are 10 cents, so 10y, and pennies are 1 cent, so 1z. And then since I put everything in cents, it would equal 297 because I put it in cents. And that'll help us avoid annoying decimals. So we know that we have 27 coins. So x plus y plus z is 27. And then we have 297 cents, so the amount of money. So those are two of the equations. And it looks like there's one more piece of information. So how many of each type of coin do you have if there's twice as many pennies as dimes? So pennies equals two times dimes. So that tells me that z equals 2y. So I'm going to do similar to last time. Rather than trying to do triangular form, I already know z is 2y, so I'm just going to replace all the z's with 2y. I think that it'll be easier to have a system of two equations rather than three. So x plus y plus 2y equals 27 or x plus 3y equals 27, and then 25x plus 10y plus 2y equals 297, so 25x plus 12y equals 297. And now you can eliminate either x or y, your choice. I think I'm going to eliminate y just because I have to multiply by a smaller number. 
So for x, we would multiply by 20, negative 25. I don't want to deal with huge numbers. So I'm going to multiply by negative 4 to eliminate y. 3 times negative 4 will get me negative 12, and those y's will eliminate. So negative 4x minus 12y equals negative 108. And then I haven't touched the second one. And the y's should eliminate when you add them together. So add them together. I get 21x is 189. So we'll divide by 21. And I get x is 9 for 9 quarters. And we can just back sub to find y and z. So I'll use the slightly more simplified one, x plus 3y is 27. So 9 plus 3y is 27. Go ahead and solve for y. I get 3y is 18, and then divide, and I get 6. So 6 dimes. And then we have multiple equations, your choice. x plus y plus z is 27, or I know z is 2 times y, so z would be 12 pennies. And that's our solution, 9 quarters, 6 dimes, and 12 pennies. Hopefully that's 27 coins. And you can always plug in to check your work. And that's it. Um, word problems I know are intimidating, but if you can find the equations, it's nothing new. So once you have those equations, we've done this. So just be patient with organizing those equations.